Hi everybody, it's Pastor Steve and here you have me right now in my prayer room and it's wonderful that you've caught me in my hammock and if this is the first time you've ever seen one of these YouTube videos, it's uh, all about prayer. And uh, Mark chapter 1 verse 35, Jesus got up well before light, uh, left the house, found his way to a secluded place to give himself to prayer. And uh, that's the topic I want to talk about today with you. Let's pray is actually the title of this video. So I want to talk to you all about prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is giving yourself to the literal influence of God, allowing the Holy Spirit to come into your mind, your heart, your life, and start to influence you. So prayer can take the form of many different things. Like you could be worshipping and that's a prayerful experience. You can be reading the Bible. That's a prayerful experience. You can be literally talking to God and opening your heart. That is prayer. You can be reading a book and, and focusing and thinking to God and asking him questions as you're reading that book. That is prayer. So prayer is more than just saying words to God and uh, from, from a mental mindset, mindset or a place. It's literally giving our lives to his influence. You know, every Christian, every human actually, has been designed to be possessed by God. What does that mean? Well, I get the image of a glass of milk. Before the, the glass has milk in it, the glass is empty. But what God wants to do is fill that glass up full of milk. And now it contains that milk. It's a container for the refreshing drink that's on the inside, full of calcium and, and life. And the Holy Spirit is the pure, unadulterated, beautiful Spirit of God. And he comes into us human containers to fill us up and possess us. To possess means to own, but it also means to take control of. Now, God is not a control freak, <laughs> so we never have to be afraid of God taking control of us against our will. But oh my goodness, what an amazing life if we can yield ourselves to the full control of God. And so that's what it is to be possessed. When the spirit of life possesses you, you're filled with life. Life controls you. Uh, the word life is zoe, which means a high quality, infinite, grand quality of life that's transformed by the creator of life himself. Jesus is a life-giving spirit. We've looked at that before on these videos. And we understand that when that life comes into us, our lives are upgraded and we experience a greater quality of living. And that's what prayer is all about, surrendering and yielding to God, to the Spirit of God, so that he can give us that life experience. And so I, I want to share a verse with you today. I, I cheated. I already have one. I haven't written it down, but I'm going to put a verse down here, and it's going to be Luke 10, 19. And so let's let's write this down, Luke Oh my gosh, I don't know if it's going to be that easy for me to do it today. Luke 10, 19. In the Passion Translation. <laughs> there we go. Wow, that was not easy. <laughs> so I'll have to find a different way to do that in future. And so let's look at Luke 10, 19. Let's jump here into the, into the Bible itself. And let's read through it, Luke 10. Let's go back to verse 19. And let's have a read of what it says. We see there that Luke 10, 19 says, Now you understand that I have imparted to you all authority to trample over his, or his kingdom, talking about the devil. You will trample under every, oh, sorry, you will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing. Oh my goodness, say that. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. 
And so what we can do right now is we can start to talk to God about that verse. We can start to open up. And what I'd like you to do is, is take a screenshot or, or write that down or stop the video and maybe pray and talk to God about that verse. And I'm actually going to pray to him about it right now as we're doing the video. So you don't have to turn the video off. But Father, you just said to us, you will trample upon every demon. That's, that's my enemies. That's your enemies, Lord. Every demon, you want us to trample on them. You want us to destroy them. You want us to take over their territory in our lives. Father, we pray right now, if there's any area the enemy has got into our lives, we declare the victory we have over them. We declare Satan has no power over us. And we thank you that we can trample upon every demon. You said any demon before us. That means where we're going to walk today, where we're going to tread. And you, uh, before of you, and overcome every power Satan possesses. And Lord, I thank you that you have given us all authority to stand on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the, the enemy. Lord, the, the devil only has power to deceive to lie, to cheat, to twist, to pervert. So, Father, you have given us the ability to overcome every power that he possesses through the truth. Father, I thank you that your truth sets us free. I thank you that your truth brings us victory today, even as we're praying on this video. Lord, right now we're praying through absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. And Father, I thank you that you've already spoken to us through Jesus in these verses saying, absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Father, we welcome your authority. We thank you the truth that is our authority. We thank you the victory that has given us breakthrough and absolutely nothing will be able to harm us. You know, there's a powerful key that just came up in my mind as I was reading through that nothing will harm us, that you and I as believers, if we understand Luke 10, 19, we've just read through it, to the extent that you believe and understand your authority over the devil will be the extent that you get to live free from his devices in this world. Remember, he can only deceive, twist, manipulate, pervert God's God's uh, truth and good things, but he can't harm us. And we just saw just there that you, he won't be able to harm us. Absolutely nothing will be able to harm you. I was at Bible college many years ago and I had a friend, Peter, and I've talked about him before on this video. And he said, Stephen, everything seems to work out for you. And uh, even thinking about that just in the last few days, why is it that it seems like my life is going so well? There are, God has no favorites. <laughs> well, do you believe you're his favorite? Yes. So that's not actually true. We are all his favorites is a better way of putting it. Sorry. And so every single believer is his favorite. I'm his favorite. You're his favorite. But as we look at this principle of understanding your authority in Christ, you can declare demonic powers, get away from my life, get away from my marriage, get away from me. When the enemy tries to form encampments or strategies against you, and yes, he does. He brings depress depression, negativity. He can even work through humans. If humans get offended at us and bitter at us and, and angry and even hate us, the moment hate comes in, that's when the enemy can control them. And so when people try and come against us, God, through his power, can overcome them. And the enemy understands this, he, he, and, but what he tries to do is keep us out of God's truth. But the truth is what sets us free. If you know who you are in Christ, you will have a great life. And I believe that's what God was speaking to me right then when I was reading through that verse. Let's pray over that. Close your eyes. Pray with me. Father, we believe that you said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And Father, we believe any tongue risen against us in judgment, we condemn, we tear down right now. But we just read in this verse that we have the authority to stand on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm us. 
Father, we believe this. If we walk in this authority, walk in your anointing, walk in a close, intimate relationship with you. As we are yielded and surrendered to your spirit, we walk in truth. We walk in authority and nothing by any means shall harm us. You know, in that prayer time that we've had in the, in the first 10 minutes of this video, I feel like God has got a point across to you that you must believe that he is your protector. And uh, I believe that a part of prayer is opening our heart up. You know, it says in the Lord's Prayer, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. It goes on, but it says, uh, and deliver us from evil. Um, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That goes on and says, and deliver us from evil. And what that's talking about is allowing us to realize that God's authority is, is what is our protection against all evil. God is our protector, our provider. The enemy cannot hurt us, cannot harm us. Let's go back to this. And just as I've been doing this video today, I believe God's been trying to encourage you about prayer and the fact that as we pray and as he leads us into Bible verses, we overcome the enemy. Satan is defeated. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. When I got to the word walk there, I felt like I heard from God again. As we pray, as we yield, as we open our hearts in prayer, we're literally setting ourselves up to walk in God's authority. You know, the days we're in right now, there's a lot of upheaval going on in governments and political systems, but we've got to be very careful. It doesn't matter which side of the spectrum we are on as a believer. What matters is that we never hate anyone. We walk in love. We walk in truth. We speak our convictions. We act according to our convictions and truth. We don't back down, but we never hate Jesus loved his enemies and he walked in truth. He overcame Satan. I believe Satan's strategy today is to bring us into darkness and bring us into hate and bring us into division. He's trying to, to divide people. And as believers, we come to Christ. And it says there, as you walk in this authority, absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk. In this authority, the word authority there is anointing, um, power, um, God's kingdom. And so when we look at this, we've got to understand that we don't walk in our own fleshly nature. It's so easy to react to so many things in life. And I discovered that as I spend time in prayer, as I spend time in worship, you know, with, with, with good music, reading the Bible and opening my heart, what I'm allowing God to do is wash my mind, not just my thinking, but my heart motives. What are the motives of your heart? What are the desires of your heart? As I come to God in prayer and I open up my mind to him, I open up my understanding, I let go of my own opinions and I allow him to be Lord and God and saviour and provider and, and protector of my life. I yield in prayer. God becomes my greatest defender. And I'd like to encourage you to allow God to be your defender. Don't ever get into the place of, 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 of um, uh, this rugged, rebellious, <laughs> self-led self, um, living. But as we allow the Lord, the Spirit, the Father to come and minister into our hearts. And as we yield to him, he becomes our greatest defender. And that is prayer. I have another verse that I'd like us to go to, and it's, it's John chapter 10, verse 10. So hopefully I can write this one out with it without it. <laughs> John 10, verse 10. Let's try it in the Passion Translation because we're already in the Passion Translation today. So let's stay there and let's um, go to John. So it's Luke, John. It's the next book 
of the um, Gospels. And it's chapter 10, verse 10. And we'll pray through this and we'll see what God's got to say to us today. And um, I want you to pray too. I want you to hear from him as well. Um, All I'm doing is telling you what I'm hearing. But as you read the Bible, as you're open to him in yielded prayer, as you go through the scriptures, as you sing songs, you're literally soaking in freedom. You're soaking your mind in truth. That sets you free. You do not want to go into your day led by your own attitudes, mindsets, humanity. God is always upgrading our lives, always taking us higher, always giving us a better experience than yesterday. And if we rely on yesterday's experiences to train us and guide us into tomorrow's reality, we are shot. We will live a religious experience. So we need fresh revelation, fresh encounters, fresh relationship with God. As I started out this morning in, in this prayer time, I, I really felt uh, Luke ten nineteen and John ten ten were two verses that came to me as I was, I was worshipping and I was praying. And I thought, let's do a video on prayer. And these verses jumped out to me. So Let's pray through them. Let's go to John 10.10 and have a look what God's got to say to us about that. It says there, a thief. Oh, my goodness. We've already jumped into what we were talking about before. The devil is a thief. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance. More than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. My goodness, you can see the plan of God in these two verses. You can see as we walk in this anointing, as we walk in his authority, nothing by any means shall harm us. And then Luke 10, 19, it's his will that we live a, an abundantly blessed life. And so we see there, as I got to the point there where it says the enemy, a thief, the moment I read thief there, I was instantly focused back on um, Luke 10, 19, the thief. He was, his whole plan is to hurt us, the devil. But we have authority over him. We have the authority to stand on the thief, to destroy him as we walk in this authority. Has only one thing in mind. And the, 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 the demonic realm does not have the capacity to yield and surrender to God. So the demonic realm, the thief, the enemy, has only one thing in its mind, and uh, it's certainly not yielded to the heart of God's mercy and grace. The devil wants to steal from you. That means during your day, as you go into your day led by your own mind, you're going to be in unity with him, and you'll allow him to steal from you. When you're led from your own mind, he can slaughter when, he, when you're led from your own mind, he can destroy. And it's not God's will for any of us to be in that strategy. So even us as humans, we cannot be led by our own minds. As we open our heart to the spirit of God, the spirit of grace and freedom and liberty. That's what prayer is all about. That's why I spend good amounts of prayer every single day. And, you know, back at Bible college, when Pete was telling me that he just thought it was unfair that things just seemed to go my way all the time. Well, they didn't always. But there were times when things went my way consistently. There was favor. There was grace. There was abundance. There was breakthrough. When my wife, Carmen, came to my Bible college, this is before I got married to her, uh, she came to my Bible college and Pete met her for the first time. He looked so jealous that I'd be married to an absolutely beautiful girl. And um, all these Bible college guys were looking around Bible college to see who they could meet. And I was like, no, I, I don't want to meet anyone here at Bible college. I already have a, have a girl that I'm chasing in Canada. And some of them, I don't think they believed me. <laughs> but when Pete saw Carmen, he said, there you, go. there you go again, Steve. Everything works out for you. <laughs> you know, I remember when I prayed for a wife, I said, Lord, send me a wife and make her 
beautiful. You know, people might look at a prayer like that and say that's selfish or whatever they want to say. Who cares? I don't care what they think. I prayed it because I already had an intimate, personal, surrendered relationship with my father. I know prayers that I pray might sound at times like I'm being very self-centered and, Lord, I pray for you to bless me. Lord, I pray for you to prosper me. Lord, I pray for your influence to flow through me and increase the influence on my life. Lord, let my businesses, let the ministry, let life uh, be, be success. Prayers like that, you might think that's very self-centered. But wait a moment. When you're yielded to God and you take a lot of time every day in prayer, in worship, in the Bible, you should never feel guilty about praying prayers that are, are blessings to you because you've actually touched the heart of God. Let's look at this. It says here, we're going somewhere with this. But I, Jesus, have come to give you everything in abundance. Did you see that? Everything in abundance. That's talking about spiritual blessings, health, protection, virtue, breakthrough, riches of of, of spiritual insight, revelation, knowledge, understanding, creativity. But it's also talking about natural everything. It's also talking about natural breakthrough, favor, grace, abundance, protection, safety. How can I understand? How can you believe this? Well, the devil is trying to be a thief to come in and steal, slaughter and destroy. Do these things uh, spiritually steal our life, slaughter us, physically to kill us and destroy us utterly, taking us to hell. But when he's stealing from us, he's stealing natural things as well. Our marriages, our, our prosperity from work, um, jobs, uh, security, uh, finances, so many things he's trying to steal. He's slaughtering our physical bodies and destroy us spiritually, eternally. This definitely has a sense and an a understanding of, of physical reality as well not just spiritual. So the devil is trying to steal everything from us, but Jesus is wanting to give everything to us in abundance. My gosh, that's so good. More than you expect. So look at the context. It's more than you expect spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Life in its fullness. So when it talks about life there, that's abundant life supernatural life, eternal life, but it's also talking about life in this earth. How do I know that? Because it's in the context of the thief stealing from us physical, emotional, spiritual life. But on this earth, the devil can't touch you in heaven. This is talking about things of this earth in this life. The thief, the devil, it can also be mindsets and also can re represent religion. He wants to steal from you. Let's put the devil in this for, for today because that's a context we're using. He wants to steal from you. He can only steal from you in this life. So this verse is specifically in the context talking about Jesus coming to give us things in this life. Eternity, of course, because we get that in this life. Uh, spiritual revelation, we get that in this life. A great intimacy with the Father in this life. But also physical needs being met in this life. Health well-being, prosperity, grace, all good things. And so when we see this, more than you expect life in its fullness until you overflow. Oh, my goodness. What a great verse. So we've been here now for a little while in prayer for about 24 minutes, and we've only touched on two verses. But when you pray and when you open up, you touch God's heart. I believe God's trying to talk to you in prayer today about not relying on your own understanding. We must yield to the Father, yield to his spirit, yield to his heart. And the moment we do that, we're protected from the strategies of Satan. We can stand all over, walk all over, defeat the works of Satan. But then we can also receive all abundance all blessings, all virtue. I believe God is speaking to you right now, right now about opening up and receiving all of his goodness. Let's just close our eyes and pray that right now. Father,
We open up to all of your goodness. Oh my gosh, I'm challenged at times when I pray this. Forgive me, Father. I'm asking you to help us all be blessed exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine or think or hope or dream exceedingly more than we can ever even possibly conjure up in our own little dumb brains <laughs> we 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 surrender that to you god we're not going to try and do any of that we simply yield to you and surrender to your your goodness your abundant life bless our marriages bless our finances, bless our friendships and relationships, bless us at work, bless us in business, bless us in ministry, bless us as parents with our children, bless children with their parents. Lord, we receive abundant life spiritually as we are going to heaven and Lord, naturally in this life. We welcome you to give us the unfair advantage of, of having the blessing on our life, living a good life, having the understanding that you are our protector, you are our provider, you are our source. I believe this right now. I receive this right now, Jesus. I take it on, my God. I welcome you to help everybody watching this YouTube video right now to live the best life in this life and then eternally go to heaven and live eternally in paradise. Father, we don't have to wait for paradise. We don't have to wait for heaven, for surely we have heaven on earth with you. Father, we have your ability to see circumstances influenced by prayer. Prayer is yielding ourselves to you so you can do what you want to do. And we've seen today through these two verses that I've written down and that we've read through, Luke ten nineteen. we have the authority to stand over all snakes and scorpions over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm us. And secondly, that the thief shall not steal, kill and destroy, but we'll have life and life more abundantly. And Lord, this is the key of what prayer is all about. Prayer is not about us. God, prayer is all about you. And Father, I'm just going to draw a little arrow here. Prayer is not selfish. Prayer is about God and prayer is about everybody around us. Because if we can live an amazing life, it's an outward focus. Prayer is all, all about outside, about God, not me, 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 me. Prayer is about living this expression of who God is in this life so that we are living letters so we can express to the world how great our God really is. So I encourage you to pray every day. I encourage you to open up every day, soak in the presence of God every day. Let God come in and possess you every day. That glass, let it be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let him come in and like the milk filling the glass up and it's all white now. <laughs> let him fill you up and be soaked with his goodness. Drink in the mercies of God every single morning, fresh, new, abundant life every day. Don't walk out into your day led by your own understanding. Remember, the enemy is led by his own mind. Let's go beyond and above living out of the resource of our own intellect and our own emotions. Let's be led by God. And that is what prayer is all about. And I encourage you, even today, as we're on this video, even as we're finishing up right now, we've got about half a minute left. I want to encourage you to reach out uh, through this video to your friends and invite them to come and watch it. Get, send it to them on, on online <laughs> if you like and uh, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, I welcome you to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that every time a new one is put on there that you can receive it. And I just bless you today. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that we have had time to pray. We've allowed you today to come into our lives, fill us up, expand us, 
Show us your truth and your direction from us. And we have received it. We believe it. We thank you for it. Go forth before us. Shine your light through us. And be that great expression of your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great time. See you next week. Bye for now.